So we already spoke about fluids, and we said that fluids include both gases as well as liquids. And we also said that the intermolecular bonds holding two or more molecules in a fluid together are relatively weak. And this weakness allows our molecules to move about with some translational as well as rotational speeds. So let's suppose we have the following system. Let's say we have a solid container and let's fill this solid container to the edge with some liquid, let's say water. And then we take another solid block and place the solid block inside our water. In other words, we submerge our solid block into the fluid filled container. I want to see what the interaction is between the molecules found in my fluid state as well as the solid block. So, the block submerged in the fluid will experience collisions with the molecules found within this fluid filled container. In other words, because the intermolecular bonds holding the individual molecules in the fluid are weak, that means that these molecules will move around within the fluid with some velocities and they will collide with the walls of my submerged solid block. Now, when we spoke about collisions, we spoke about the impulse. Now, the impulse is simply the change in momentum that my molecule experiences when it makes its collision. Now, we also said that the force or the average force exerted by one of the molecules on one of the walls of my container of my uh, solid block is given by the following formula. The average force created by one of these fluid molecules is given by the following equation. So a change in momentum, which is simply my impulse, divided by the change in time, or the time it takes for my collision to take place. Now, what happens if we find the net force and divide it by the area? In other words, let's say we choose one of the faces of this solid block. Let's choose this face. So here it is. I want to find the net force by simply summing up all the forces, all the average forces created by all the molecules hitting or colliding with this section. Now if I sum that up and then divide it by the area, this area in this case, I will get the pressure exerted on this area due to these molecules. And this is known as the fluid pressure. Once again, the fluid pressure is the net average force created by the fluid molecules per some given area. In this case, I chose this face to be my area. Now the units of pressure is force divided by A, so it must be newtons divided by meter squared. Now, one newton per meter squared is known as one pascal. So let's look at the following basic example to gain more intuition about fluid pressure. So, if the impulse of the molecules over a period of 0.2 seconds on an area of 2 meters squared is 50 kilograms times meter divided by second, what is the pressure? So this is a direct example or direct application of the following formula. So we use pressure equals force divided by area, which is the same thing as change in my momentum or my impulse divided by change in time times my area. In other words, I'm basically taking this formula and plug it into the top here and that's exactly what I get here. So, I'm given that my impulse is 50 kg times meter divided by second and I'm given my time period which is 0.2 seconds and I'm also given my area 2 meters squared. So I plug those guys in and I get 50 divided by 2 times 0.2 which is simply 125 newtons per meter squared. So this is my pressure created by the following system. So now let's examine fluids at rest. 
let's suppose we have the following system a rectangular container that is filled to the edge to the brim with some fluid let's say water now what it means for this fluid filled system to be at rest is that on a macroscopic scale my system is stationary the fluid on a macroscopic system is not translating or rotating with any velocity its velocity and any direction is zero and that means that the only forces acting on my object my fluid filled system are the normal forces exerted by the walls of the container at a 90 degree angle to the surface of my fluid. Now this is not the same thing as saying on a microscopic scale my object is not moving. In fact on a microscopic scale, on a very small scale, the individual molecules found inside my fluid are still moving. They still have translational as well as rotational velocities. But if I sum up all the different types of velocities of all my different types of molecules found within my fluid, I will get a net velocity of zero. And that's exactly what we mean by a velocity of zero on a macroscopic scale. So once again, fluids at rest simply means that on a macroscopic scale my fluid is not moving but on a microscopic scale my individual molecules are still allowed to translate and in fact they are so let's suppose we take a solid block and we submerge that solid block inside my fluid filled container I want to ask the following uh, question is there a relationship between the pressure that is felt by this block and the height above my surface of the fluid? And the answer is yes, there is a relationship and it's given by the following equation. So pressure that this block feels on top of the block on this surface area here is given by the following formula. So pressure is equal to density of my fluid multiplied by gravitational constant that's acting on my block, 9.81 meters per second second, and the distance above my fluid filled surface. So notice what happens if I take my density and replace it with mass divided by volume, which is what density is. It's the equation for a density. So I take m divided by v and plug it instead of this row. What I get is the following. This h will cancel. Why? Well, because volume is area times height. So on the bottom, we have area times height. On the top, we have mass times g times h. The H's cancel out and we are left with pressure is equal to M times G divided by A. Now this formula gives us another way of interpreting what pressure is. The pressure that is felt by this block is simply the weight of this area of fluid on top or this volume of fluid on top of my block divided by the area of this surface uh, face here. Now, let's say we have the following example. Let's take another container and let's fill it with three different types of fluids that have three different types of densities. Let's say we have fluid 1 with density 1, fluid 2 with density 2, and fluid 3 with density 3. Now, the height of this block is H1, the height of this block is H2, and the height of this block is H3. Now, we're making the assumption that these fluids are not mixable. So, they can't mix, and that's why we get three different separate layers of fluids. Now, let's suppose I wanted to find what the pressure is that is felt at this point below all three of these fluids. To find the pressure, because we get this formula, I simply see that in order to find the pressure, I have to sum up all the pressures of these guys. And I get the following result. The pressure felt at this lowest point here is simply the density 1 times g times height 1, this distance, plus density 2 times g times height 2, plus density 3 times g times h3, or height 3. And this gives me the pressure of this point. Now, if I add a fourth and fifth layer and so on, I simply add up my pressures, and this will give me the final pressure. Likewise, if I want to find the pressure 
at this point, at this point, I simply have to worry about these two pressures and not this pressure. So now let's talk about the final topic called atmospheric pressure. Now because air is also a fluid, it's a gas, that means we can also measure something called the atmospheric pressure, which is the pressure that is created by the air molecules found in the air. So to gain more intuition about atmospheric pressure, let's look at a problem. So let's look at the following example. In this example, we have an open container that's open at the top that's filled to the brim with some fluid. Let's say this fluid is water. That means the density of my fluid is one kilogram per meter cubed. Now, I want to ask the following question. What is the pressure that is felt by any object placed 10 meters below the surface of my fluid on this red plane here. Let's say I take any object and place it on my red plane. Let's say at this point, that's 10 meters below the surface of my fluid. And knowing that the atmospheric pressure, which is the pressure due to the gas molecules found above the surface, is 101,300 pascals or 101,300 newtons per meter squared, I want to find what the pressure is. Now, to answer this question, we must understand the following concept. That the final pressure that is felt by any object found on this plane, 10 meters below, is actually the sum of two pressures. The first pressure is this distance here. So in other words, we want to find what the pressure is due to these liquid molecules found above my object at this point, 10 meters below. And then I want to add that pressure due to the pressure of the gas molecules found above. Remember, this is an open container that is open at the top, and that means the gas molecules at the top are colliding with the liquid uh, right here. So that means that these gas molecules also exert a pressure on this liquid, which also exerts a pressure on this object found 10 meters below. So to find my pressure at this point, I have to sum up the pressure due to my fluid and the pressure of the atmosphere. So pressure due to the fluid is simply the uh, density, which is one kilogram per meter cubed times G, my gravitational constant, 9.81 meters per second second, times H, in this case, 10 meters. And we add that to 1,001 or 101,300 pascals. So we simply sum these guys up and we get 101,398.1 pascals or newton per meter squared. So my object or any object placed 10 meters below the surface will feel a pressure of this much.